And now, from TV8, where news is number one, Kevin Cooney, Kathy Saltero, Connie McBurney with weather, and Pete Taylor Sports. This is TV8 News. Good evening, everyone. I'm Steve Oswalt. Kevin has the night off tonight. Our top story, slick, icy roads have made for some treacherous driving conditions tonight. A Johnson woman is in critical condition following a two-vehicle crash as a result of the icy roads. Michelle Parker joins us live now from the interstate to update us on the situation. Michelle? Well, Kathy, law enforcement officials and hospital emergency room personnel have been kept very busy tonight trying to keep up with the numerous accidents and taking care of the numerous accident victims, streets and roads remain very treacherous. This accident happened in the 5900 block of Northwest Fever in Johnson. Police say one vehicle crossed the center line and smashed into another vehicle. Four people were hurt in this accident. One critically, a Johnson woman identified as 28-year-old Joni Sonic is in critical condition. Earlier in the evening, a rescue unit slid off the road. It was on a call when it struck a patch of ice. It slid 400 to 500 feet through an intersection and down an embankment. No one was hurt in this accident. And most of the accidents that have occurred tonight have been minor. But as we said, the roads are very treacherous. If you're planning to travel and you need information on statewide road conditions, the number to call is 288-1047. That's 288-1047. And like we said, you just have to be very careful if you do go out. And police say, if you don't have to travel, don't do it. This is Michelle Parker. Reporting live, back to Kathy and Steve. All right, thanks, Michelle. You be careful, too. Okay. It's been following this weather situation as it's developed all throughout the evening. And Steve, it really hasn't gotten much better since 6. No, it sure hasn't, Steve. It hasn't gotten much better at all. Uh, we do have some problems out there looking at the road conditions right now. They're not very good at all. Most of the state is 0 to 100 percent ice covered. The exceptions, north central Iowa, 0 to 50 percent ice covered, and northeast and east central Iowa, where road conditions are somewhat normal. Freezing drizzle will continue tonight over southeastern Iowa, the southeastern one half of Iowa, before cold air, colder air moves in tomorrow, and that will uh, change the freezing drizzle to snow. And we'll have a little bit more on the entire weather situation a little bit uh, later in the news. All right, Steve, thanks. A Des Moines woman is it without a home tonight after fire struck her residence earlier this evening. Fire investigators still aren't sure what caused the fire at the Pat Martin residence tonight at 1019 East 9th Street. Damage estimates aren't available, but firefighters say the entire front of the house has been destroyed by the blaze. There were no injuries from the fire. Martin was able to escape safely when the flames broke out at about 8 this evening. A Marshalltown girl is dead. Her stepfather is in the Marshalltown jail tonight, charged with first-degree murder and child endangerment. 21-year-old Matthew Sage of Marshalltown appeared in court this morning on those charges. He's accused of killing six-month-old Samantha Tidwell. Police say the two were at the Marshalltown apartment Wednesday when Sage called to say the girl had stopped breathing. The girl was flown to Des Moines Hospital where she died yesterday of massive internal injuries. Investigators say they have enough evidence to charge Sage with murder. I don't want to get into too much to say what, what we feel really happened. Uh, this child received some very massive internal injuries, uh, you know, in our estimation caused by, by Matthew Sage, They're, you know, therefore the, the two charges. Uh, as to the exact sequence, uh, you no, know, that's, that's currently still in, under investigation. Uh, well, you know, we can just say uh, the massive injuries uh, certainly were violently committed on this child. Assistant Chief Doan says no weapon was used on the girl. A preliminary hearing for Sage has been set for January 8th. A new U.S. attorney for the Southern District of Iowa took office today. Gene Shepard, the former state public safety commissioner, was sworn in at the federal courthouse today. He replaces Christopher Hagan, who was acting U.S. attorney following the death of Richard Turner in 1986. Shepard is a former sheriff's deputy and county attorney. Acting in his place in the state's public safety department is 39-year-old Larry Noble. The governor named Noble today. He's a former state trooper and bodyguard to the governor. Iowa's law against pornographic materials was put to use this afternoon. The Woodbury County attorney says he's filed charges against Sioux City Entertainment dealers. The attorney says several individuals and corporations were charged with violating the law. None are in custody and names wouldn't be released. Workers at Fawn Engineering in Clive will get an extended holiday vacation. Plant officials say their manufacturing operation will be shut down longer so assembly lines can be worked on. The modifications are being done during the company's annual holiday closure. 
Workers should return to their jobs by the end of January. Union officials have not expressed any major concerns over the extended closure. It's backed by popular demand. The United Food and Commercial Workers Union, local 1149. Workers at the plant when it was owned by Austin Meyer. IBP admits it would rather not have a union, but workers overwhelmingly told the company they want a union. This makes the Perry plant one of five IBP plants that have a union. Contract talks have not yet been scheduled. Still ahead on the TV8 News, the, uh, the full Des Moines Human Rights Commission is asked to step down. And it was two years ago today that six family members were shot to death in Algona. We'll have today's new developments when we return. Be a part of the TV8 News team. If you see news happen, call TV8 News at 247-8844. A Citizens Committee is recommending that all the current members of the Des Moines Human Rights Commission resign. The task force has been since September, and it released its recommendations today. The report says dissension and alienation among the commissioners has made them ineffective. Regulations also call for the commission and its staff to remain independent, but to have more communication with the city manager and the council. The report says the human task force has been studying the commission since September and the mayor it says a council member should be appointed as liaison between the council and commission. The really should have a degree of independence. But on the other hand, but on the other hand, the accountability has to be there and there has to be a mechanism for which to deal with a commission or a department in the event that the performance maybe starts to slip. The report also recommends the human rights director be evaluated annually by the commission and the city manager, as well as doing a self-evaluation. The estate of an Algona man who fatally shot six family members before turning the gun on himself will be divided among his relatives. Two years ago, Robert Driesman went on a shooting rampage, killing his parents, sister, and her children. He then shot himself. Before he died, he drafted a will, leaving the surviving family members a dollar each, and the rest of the money would then go to charity. The surviving relatives filed wrongful death claims against the estate. All parties have agreed to split the assets of the estate with the help of an investigator. World leaders today are hailing the election of Václav Havel as president of Czechoslovakia. Havel was sworn in today as the country's first non-communist president in more than 41 years. President Bush today called the turn of events in Czechoslovakia living proof that democratic change can be brought about peacefully. In Poland, Solidarity Leader Lech Walesa welcomed the selection of Havel with great joy, and West Germany also sent a telegram promising support for the new government. The first men in more than 41 years have begun to pull in the streets of Panama City. And when he up in the Vatican Embassy in Panama City while negotiations continue for his release, a U.S. military source says most of the new security officers are members of Noriega's dismantled security forces. The U.S. today softened its tone a bit by saying that it's now satisfied with the way the Vatican is handling the Noriega matter. The United Nations today voted 75 to 20 to condemn the U.S. invasion of Panama and called for the withdrawal of U.S. troops from that country. In Romania, the revolutionary government has begun placing members of the nation's feared secret police on trial. Thousands of members of deposed dictator Nicolae Ceausescu's security forces are now in custody. The military government's newly formed military council today issued a final call for the pro-Ceausescu forces to surrender. Well, Steve, I'm almost afraid to hit the streets tonight after the newscast. It sounds pretty <laughs> well, bad. Almost like out there, freezing drizzle is still falling here in central Iowa, and we do have a freezing drizzle advisory in effect for the southern one half of the state. It's not very nice out there. We'll see if we can clear things up when the TV8 news continues. For the latest weather information, day or night, call the TV8 Weather Beacon forecast at 262-7173. A 24-hour service of your Des Moines area hy V stores and Cremettes. You've been, if you've been outside lately, I think you've noticed there's a nice coat of ice on everything, but Skycam still seems to be working. I don't know if that's 
ready to move left to right or up and down or anything, but uh, we still have freezing drizzle out there right now, 27 degrees. Wind out of the northeast at 10 miles per hour. Relative humidity is at 92%. We do have a rising barometer. Let's take a, the, take a look at those road conditions once again. Most of the state, 0 to 100% ice pack. So if you're headed out uh, tonight or tomorrow, please keep that in mind. It has cleared up a little bit in north central Iowa, 0 to 50% uh, ice pack, and east central and northeast Iowa are normal. Temperatures across the state right now are uh, in the 20s to right around 30 degrees, 23 at Mason City, 22 over in Spencer as we move south and east. Things warm up a little bit because the cold air is moving in from the northwest. 30 degrees in Ottumwa and 32 down in Burlington right now. It's after some daytime highs that were pretty nice, 40 degrees down in Burlington, 38 in Ottumwa and over in Lamoni. A little bit cooler up in the north, the cold air started to move in for a high at Spencer today. Here in Des Moines, a high of 37 and a low of 29. Central Iowa close kind of shows a mix. 41 in Knoxville, 45 over in Winterset. Bango reported in with a high of 6 today, but as we move south, things warm up a little bit. 60s down in the southern reaches of the country, and pretty nice to be down there on a day like today. 71 for a high in Miami, 78 in Brownsville, Texas, and a little bit cool out in the uh, Pacific Northwest with 46 for a high out in Seattle. Satellite photo at 6 o'clock today shows a whole lot of cloudiness over the state of Iowa, a lot of this right here. This is where most of the freezing drizzle was falling uh, later on today and is falling right now. Uh, by 9 o'clock, uh, the front has pushed through the state of Iowa, but following it is that unstable, very moist air, and that's why we're getting the freezing drizzle. And behind it is some colder air, which may uh, make things turn over to flurries in northern Iowa later on tonight and flurries over the state tomorrow. A lot of uh, freezing drizzle off to our east as well. The Ohio and Mississippi valleys are just being dumped on tonight. A lot of problems there, a little snow in the Great Lakes area on up into New England. Rain along the Gulf Coast of Texas and Louisiana and back into portions of uh, New Mexico and Arizona. They're getting a little snow as well. For tomorrow, we'll see the front push through and the colder air behind it. As I said, we'll leave some flurries or light snow behind in the state of Iowa. But by tomorrow, the freezing drizzle will be gone and we'll be able to drive again. The forecast for the state of Iowa for tonight, we'll see light snow north, freezing drizzle south. The freezing drizzle advisory is in effect for the southern one half of Iowa, and that does include Des Moines. We have a northeasterly wind at 10 to 15 miles per hour, and our temperatures will range from the middle teens to the middle 20s. And the weather beacon is white and flashing. It means we have a cold day in sight and also a chance for some precipitation. Clouds over most of the state. Could see some light snow here in central Iowa, some flurries down in southwest Iowa. Light snow down in southeastern Iowa, about a 40% chance of getting something, but not too much of it uh, to accumulate there. Wind out of the west at 5 to 15 miles per hour, and the temperatures ranging from the middle 20s to the lower 30s. Your forecast for Des Moines in central Iowa for tonight, freezing drizzle advisory is in effect with occasional freezing drizzle at times mixed with flurries low in the middle 20s northeast wind at 10 miles per hour tomorrow cloudy with a few flurries or some light snow high around 30 degrees tomorrow night decreasing cloudiness low around 20 sunday partly cloudy a high around 30. your extended outlook for new year's day tuesday and wednesday fair skies on new year's day a chance of snow on tuesday and wednesday highs throughout the period will be in the middle 20s to the middle 30s and the lows will be in the teens, so it's pretty darn normal for this time yeah. of year. <laughs> Tonight, though, a good night, another one of those nights to stay inside. Just stay in there. <laughs> All right, you talked me into it. Thanks, dude. Okay. <laughs> Up next in sports, one of baseball's greatest legends is laid to rest today. And we'll take a look back at a decade of Drake highlights. Pete Taylor's up next with that and more in sports. Well, it sounds like the Drake Bulldogs are having a tough time on the road. Maybe it's too warm in Hawaii for them. Yeah, nice trip, but the games aren't going so well. In fact, Drake lost two games in the same day. Played one this morning, Iowa time, about 12-15, then turned around and played again in Hawaii tonight. Dropped its second game. Bob Harstead scored 28 of his 30 points in the second half to help Missouri Valley Conference foe Creighton beat the Bulldogs 77-71. Sam Rorick led Drake with 21 points. The Bulldogs will face San Francisco tomorrow. And look at this. Georgetown, ranked number three in America, is playing Northern Iowa tonight in Las Vegas. The Panthers giving the Hoyas all they want. Georgetown leading at halftime, 38-35. to 35. Other final scores in college basketball. Illinois, 97. Grambling State, 73. Michigan State rolled past San Jose State. 
Northwestern beat William and Mary 103 to 78. Wisconsin down Manhattan 63 to 45. Purdue and Arizona a late start. Oklahoma with another big night offensively 147 to 94 over North Texas State and Kansas won by 20 over Pan American. Kansas State and South Carolina will be a late start. Colorado losing to Massachusetts 78 to 71. In the Valley, Southern Illinois beat Air Force by 15. Tulsa and Arkansas, Arkansas State will also be getting underway in just a few minutes. Women's basketball tonight, the fourth-rated Iowa women's team was upset. The 18th-rated South Carolina came from 10 down at halftime to upend the Hawks 83 to 76, Iowa's second loss of the season. And the Iowa State women played at San Diego State tonight, and the Cyclones were winners 65 to 59. These finals in from the NBA, Indiana by 6 over Houston, Phoenix by 17 over Minnesota. Milwaukee winning 99-85 at Detroit. Jeff Grayer with nine rebounds to lead the Bucks tonight. Chicago 101, San Antonio 97, and Portland and Dallas are tied at 121, and that is in its second overtime. Another bowl game in progress tonight. It's the Holiday Bowl in San Diego. Game is now late in the third quarter, and Penn State is leading BYU by a 29-26 score. Well, Yankee fans, players, and sports personalities gathered in New York at St. Patrick's Cathedral today to pay final respects to Billy Martin. Scores of fans waited outside the church during the funeral services for Martin, who died Christmas night in a truck accident. Ball bearers included Mickey Mantle, Whitey Ford, George Steinbrenner, and former President Nixon and Howard Cosell were among those in attendance. And tonight, John Walters winds up his look back at the 1980s with a review of the highlights involving the Drake Bulldogs. To give you an idea of how much can happen in a decade, consider this. In 1980, Chuck Shelton took his Drake football team to Colorado and won by 26 points. Nine years later, the Buffs are on the verge of a national championship, and Drake competes at the Division III level. But a lot of great things have happened in the 80s for Drake, and Shelton provided many of the great moments in 1981. Drake won 10 games that year for the first time ever, capped by a 53 to nothing trouncing of Nebraska-Omaha. Bulldogs shared the Missouri Valley Conference championship with Tulsa. Drake's last Division I season in 1985, and the Bulldogs went out in style, upsetting Iowa State 20 to 17. Jeff Long had a key interception return for a touchdown. February 2nd, 1981, Drake's Lewis Lloyd nails a baseline jumper at the buzzer to give the Bulldogs a two-point win over Bradley. Drake goes on to win 18 games, and Lloyd earns All-American honor. Five years later, Drake wins 19 games, including an eight-point victory over Iowa State's top team. The Bulldogs went on to earn a spot in the NIT tournament. That same season included a disappointing yet unforgettable moment. Drake had battled back to tie Bradley on a late jumper by Glenn Martin. But then, with just one second on the clock, Bradley's Percy Hawkins took a length of the court pass and nailed the game winner. Women's basketball enjoyed great success at Drake in the decade. Carol Baumgarten's 1982 team beat Ohio State and Long Beach State in the NCAA tournament. Drake won 28 games. Three years later, Wanda Ford leads Drake to an NCAA win over Kentucky. Ford becomes the first woman ever to lead the nation in scoring and rebounding and makes All-American. April 1981, Drake has four individual champions at the Drake Relays, including Chris Mayers, who dives at the finish line to edge Southern Illinois' Karsten Schultz in the 1500. It took eight years for Drake to crown another Relays champ, but Kevin Little did it in grand style last spring, winning the 200 and the 400. He was named the meet's outstanding male athlete. And in about four months, Kevin Little will be back on the Jim Duncan track, trying for another Relays title or two to get Drake off to a great start in the 1990s. John Walters, TV8 Sports. Hope they get the snow off by yeah, April. Yeah, really. <laughs> and in just 10 years from now, we'll, we'll, we'll be Look doing back, more yeah. reports. We'll <laughs> be right back. Wall Street ended the 1980s on an up note today. The Dow Jones Industrials were up 2090 at 2753.20. An average share up about 26 cents for the day. Nearly 146 million shares were traded. For the week, the Dow was up 41.81. New York gold today was up $3.90 an ounce. Silver was up six cents an ounce. Cattle were untested. Hogs were steady to 50 lower. At Iowa elevators, prices on corn were mixed, one lower to one higher, and soybeans steady to three lower, Steve. Well, it's a good night to stay indoors. Freezing drizzle advisory is in effect for the southern one half of Iowa for tonight, including the city of Des Moines. Forecast for Des Moines and central Iowa for tonight. Occasional freezing drizzle at times mixed with flurries, low in the middle 20s. Tomorrow, cloudy with a few flurries or some light snow, a high around 30. Right now in Des Moines, we do have freezing drizzle and 27 degrees.
Well, it's been an amazing week of events in Romania. And as we close out this week and the decade of the 1980s, we'll take a look back at some of those events and the people who help make TV8 News possible each week. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night. Good night.